You guys are ready? Is it? It's good. It's got louder. Oh, no, there I go. That's great. I love to hear myself saying stuff to podcasts and, and geeks everywhere out there. Hi, Comic Con 2023. How's it going? Hey ho, hey ho. Uh, my name's Chris, and I'm going to be doing a short conversation on geek podcasting uh, right here. Where are we in? Nazareth. Oh yeah, it took it took so long to get here. I, I genuinely, I was here last year as well, right, doing a session about uh, comic book karaoke. And when I was coming here, I was like, damn, dude, I don't remember going past the red zone, but it was cool. Oh, cool. I'm glad I got you. Um, all right. Uh, so what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to just, I'm going to take you through basically constructing your own ideas for your own geek podcast. And you might be saying, oh, well, that's, that's really easy, Chris. It's not actually because we have over 5 million unique podcasts right now currently active in the world and about 4.9 of them are um, kind of rubbish, right? Which is fine, it's great because it gives you an opportunity to really stand out, right? And no judgment, I love the fact that people are trying and that people are continuing to grow this particular platform, this particular medium, but it is also something to talk about uh, the whole aspect of why people are confusing podcasts and live streams as podcasts or regurgitated content that comes off radio, which is not podcasting. Podcasting is unique, it is independent, it is progressive, and it is something that was actually developed because it was developed for a voice of the actual people on the street. So we say that uh, many years ago, um, uh, like the top podcasts in America were actually run by housewives, desperate housewives. And this was great because they were not aiming to be these great entertainers. They were aiming to tell stories and they were telling great stories. And what we're sitting in right now, unfortunately, as everything has happened in um, modern society, is that it's been drowned out by the commercial product of big brands and of big names and whatever it is but it is still here and it is a voice for the people. Who am I? I'm Chris. I have been doing media for 24 years. Um, I can ramble on about all these places I've worked with, like with SABC and ETV and Prime Media. And I've worked overseas for SARFM and I have my own company, but I have been in podcasting for 13 years. I, I, was, I didn't know that I was podcasting in 2010, genuinely didn't know the terminology of it. But I started a channel called randomrader.com, myself and Brad O'Regan, who works at KFM right now. And um, we were working for Ryan Seacrest at the time. It sounds super fancy, but it really wasn't. We were one of 40 of his producers. It was cool when it lasted, but we wanted to go on. And we said to one another, and one of the nights we were actually sitting there producing, we were saying like, we should be saying something cool, because we've got cool things to say. And we started this randomradio.com and we started talking a lot of rubbish, and it sounded really bad. Um, and we didn't, thank God, publish those horrible episodes, but what we realized soon enough is that podcasting, yes, is unrestricted, and it was this like, oh man, this, it was like, I don't want to use some kind of like SNM term, but you know, like a choking chain? That's kind of what radio is. It, it's, it's for a certain demographic with a lot of restrictions, you take that off and we could say anything we wanted and we had a lot of fun and people gravitated to it like other other personalities wanted to be on the show and we had a lot of like artists and a lot of influencers quote unquote even though we didn't have the term coming to us and saying we want to also be on this particular medium this particular brand just to say things that well the rest of the world actually isn't really saying you know and so we actually developed one of the first podcasts here in South Africa. Um, I think it trended, uh, not I think I know, it trended between uh, 14 and 33 of the top, um, I say, YouTube channels, right? I say YouTube channel. We only had audio and we had a singing cow. Um, actually, not a singing cow, a singing rhino. Let me be accurate, right? So it was, it was, we had started something and podcasting became something that I was doing, like I say, since then up to now it has obviously been formalized and so what i want to do now is i want to chat about how you can start understanding your own voice right and what you should be podcasting about if it's within obviously a geek space right um or if you just want to actually do something on your own i did make notes don't judge me please i want to try and be succinct 
So, um, so I do want to again just say that please, you, you don't have to compete with another medium in the sense that we have radio, it's an audio me uh, medium, and it is nothing again like, like podcasting, but do know that lifestyle choices are how we decide um, how to, let's say, analyze a, a consumer, okay? So any consumer is someone that's sitting here, it's me, it's you, and you decide, listen, today I want to be able to listen to a podcast, I want to also go and I want to live stream a show, um, it might be obviously online in any kind of whatever it is, I can also go and do a Netflix series, I can go to the gym, I can go um, on a run, it doesn't matter, right? I'm including different aspects into my lifestyle. And so it's very important for us to understand that when people make a choice, and they do include podcasting in there, which all of us have done at some point or another, they've decided that this product is good enough, it is viable enough, and it is definitely worth my time to include as part of what I consider really important in my life, right? It's also got to reflect, super reflective of what it is and which point I am in my life so perhaps it is something that i'm interested in sure maybe it is something that i'm going through um maybe it is a conversation that i need to have with my dad i've, I've got a couple here right um it is social issues uh there could be education plain old education that i want to learn about something uh maybe it's something that i'm currently i'm going through a depressive state and so i want to i want to link and i want to connect to stories that are in that zone of sadness of like like conveying or communicating aspects of depression right um i could want to i don't know reach out and elevate my aspect or my perseverance for hope and i can go and find a podcast that goes and mirrors that there are there are so many different types of feelings emotions states affairs that we are in that we go look at media to go and reflect exactly that of what it is that we are trying to express for ourselves please if there are any questions at any one point or comment sure um oh there's a yeah there's, there's mics right here sure uh then please do i'd love to engage uh is that on yeah um everyone knows russ from the super super successful yeah go ahead yeah um, what is the costs involved with the equipment you need to do your first podcast? Um, I mean, like good earphones, good mics. Um, what is like a good middle of the range sort of budget? All right. So to not so to not obviously scare you away from podcasting, and also I've got to tell you something that I I mean I did um, so I did this this one podcast. I had a stroke five years ago. Right. I've got to, I'm coming to the story right now. Um, I had a stroke five years ago, couldn't speak, learned how to speak again, whatever it was, one of my milestones was to create a podcast, right, as to as a way to come back into the, the nature of being a communicator. And I created the soundtrack of my life, right? At 68 plays in total of a, a six-part series, I recorded on my phone, right, and I got nominated for a radio award, South Africa. That's not to say that South African radio awards have low quality, it's about, I knew how to use my phone because I didn't have money for a mic and I didn't have money for because a, a decent mic is about let's say two thousand bucks right one that's going to genuinely also need maybe one for a host as well so let's average on two thousand bucks you obviously need the editing software you just need a laptop you know obviously know how to edit and stuff like that and if uh, if you can make a podcast work for you like right now if I want ambience and I want to work here I just need to lead someone just a little bit outside where I have a little bit of atmosphere. I can do a bit of a recording. I can go back and I can edit, but I can do it all on my phone if you don't want the cost and you can still get award nominee or winning quality. Does that, does that make sense? But ideally, if you're going to do this for the long run, like you should go and invest. Look, don't, don't get duped by the 299 um, uh, microphones because I did that too. I went to go test out what mics and what mic qualities are, are available. So I went to the lowest common denominator, which is about 299, 350, right? 
Man, it was horrible. It is horrible. I still have that as an urgent reminder to tell me never to spend money on a cheap product, right? The phone still recorded much better. Right now, my phone is going to record something that I'm going to transfer uh, or transform into a podcast. It's going on IG Live right now, which is fine. It's a great way of re, re, um, kind of recycling the stuff as well. But does that answer the question? Cool, man. Okay, great. All right. So, um, so what I do is uh, I have the I don't know if there's a if there's a guy a guy there that's gonna play a little bit of audio mine. Um, you get to have a little bit of audio. So these are just little snippets um, of of some of my podcasts. I've got WTF? Are you talking about? It's a Gen Z podcast about me as a non Gen Z speaking to Gen Z people about things that I don't understand. There's um, there's uh, the sort the the, the soundtrack of my life. I've got my uh, celebrity interviews. This is Shirley Manson, one of my favorite ones as well. You all know from Garbage. And then I've also got uh, Coffee with Convicts, which is me interviewing an uh, ex-convict from uh, obviously spending their 30, 20, 30 years in, uh, in prison. And if you want to play some, some of that. And then I'm going to get to geek, po geek podcasting and some ideas. You good? I can move on and come back. I can move on and come back. It's cool. I do want to know about the unity. I did say about the unity previously, right, in, in Gen Z. Yes. I want to know about Gen Z moving forward. Is it inclusive or exclusive? So in other words, does it include the rest of the world? Do you ever picture someone outside and maybe even younger? My favorite thing pieces are when people come through and then be like, okay, so listen, this is the case that's affecting our generation, but we need to understand where it came from and that's where we need to start. Yeah. Instead of people just being like, oh, Chris, you're old, your generation things up and that's your problem mm -hmm. and you don't deserve any part of mm -hmm. our success. Go to, I don't know, what were they doing in 1914? <laughs> and behind, uh, or inside the counter lot was a small compartment where there was a pillow and a couple of blankets where I would have my noon naps. And around that time of day, business was always rather slow. And man, you know, I, I'm already smiling just thinking about it. I would lie. I would lie in my mother's arms and she would tell me a story, a noon bedtime story. But it was never a tale about Cinderella or Sleeping Beauty or, or any nursery rhymes like Humpty Dumpty and Mother Goose. Uh, this was because from her youth, she always was told stories and folklore from our heritage as Greeks. So the mythologies of the gods, from Zeus's glorious battles to the Odyssey and claim of the Golden Fleece, Jason's battle with the Hydra, the Titans, Medusa, and so much more. And I absolutely loved it. Not just the stories, but she was the first and sentimentally the best storyteller that I've ever known. Those moments were soul connecting with soul in a foundation of unconditional love, listening to her encouraged and passionate voice as she made those moments just for the two of us. To know that life was gifted with pure love and God sent. And it was based on nothing else but because you exist in someone else's world. As, um, as Albert Einstein once said, do not grow old no matter how long you live. And to retain this, I find that if I run a play through on some of the greatest moments of growth and happiness while growing up, I spell a great life hack manual for how I can remain forever young today and in days to come. Vincent, can you explain to me then the mindset of home robbers, right? They rape the woman in front of, let's say, the husband. They make it torture. Just the whole process. Tell me about guys like that. Yeah, when you look at the person's face, when you ask him or ask him, during the time that you committed a certain crime, 
what went through your mind? They killed them both anyway at the end of it. So they make a, it's like an experience, a whole experience. Like it's not just get in, get out type thing. There is this thing in African uh, 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 religion. If the king is sick, the nation is sick. You find the leader that leading that gang is not the leader for the money, it's the leader to terrorize. Yeah. Are you struggling to cope in the real world because, I mean, you're hustling the whole time. I mean, come now, like you, you keep you keep on taking the high road. You could easily just commit a crime and make this easier for yourself. When I was, I was, I was, I was released, uh, one, one thing that happened to me, is that within the family, Especially when you are a man, there's women there. They will always tell you that. You must always remember, if you do anything wrong, you send you straight back to jail. Yeah. When you go along the street, you find people having cockroaches, booty cockroaches. When you could just want to pass to them, when you greet them, some will say hi, some will say it's nothing. Do you think it's so? It's going to carry with you for the rest of your life? No, I don't think so, Chris. Chris because why? Nah. Because at the end of the day. You as individual, you have to accept that the destiny is not controlled by you. Hi Chris, how are you? Hey Shirley, fine and you? I'm good, thank you. Good, listen, welcome. Thank you so much for chatting to us. Um, it's, you know, quote unquote, you know, okay. this, this... Yeah, um, sorry, I don't want to carry on for too long. So that was just a three of the four there. And if you really want to go listen to Shirley Manson, you can just go to my Iona account on Spotify. Just go check it, Chris, Chris, Chris Jordan Media. Okay, all right, okay. So... So it's a couple of, uh, okay, so I want to look at geek podcasting. Geeks, we are all fellow geeks. Man, we know so much about a particular something that we can talk about something quite organically for years on end. You know yourself. Conversations that you have had with fellow geeks, right? You just love them and you are invested in them. You can talk about conspiracy theories and alternate dimensions and this and that, your own ultimate like ultimate should I say dimension right geeks have a great starting point a vantage point right when it comes to creating content and you know that right we see our, our, our fellow geeks on again TikTok YouTube Instagram doesn't matter but now you can enter this like audio space audible uh, capacity of telling your own story from a geek perspective right so what I'm going to do is like I'll take, uh, so, so when I started radio, I worked for Rian van Heeren, I was at Tux FM, and he, he really taught me well in terms of trying to create an angle for a story, right? When you're doing podcasting, you can't look at umbrella topics and do what everyone else has spoken about already. Because there are so many people that are looking for unique perspectives in podcasting. You start with an umbrella topic, you put an angle to that, and then you put another two angles on those angles to know where that you are coming from, like I say, a creative point of view. You're saying, oh, that sounds like rubbish, or it sounds too, too, I don't know, too broad for me to even understand. I'm gonna apply it to, let's say a gaming example, and I'll do a couple of examples. So I, I would like to do these certain podcasts, these are ones that I'm gonna mention, they're really great. Uh, I'm gonna take the, the big umbrella of gaming. Then I'm going to look at, let's say, how gaming amplified its its presence in terms of like a comfort blanket for people that, that spotlighted during the COVID pandemic, right? So we found that obviously everyone, everyone wanted escapism during that time. And with gamers in specific, it was actually quite healthy for them to go out, play in a virtual space, in a fantasy realm, right? And come back only now and again to have to like deal with the real world right what happened is that it became so addictive that a lot of game players right became attached to this alternate identity calling it identity dysmorphia they would go out into the real world as this avatar adopt this avatar's lifestyle brand image how they eat how they drink what they bath in, whatever it is, they would go to work, they would interact with their family as this person, as a disorder psychologically because of the trauma that perhaps they never wanted to or don't want to anymore relate to. I would follow these people around to journal what their thought process is and how they interact with the world and I would call them I Eight ATE bit gaming. I think it's pretty clever. I always find a nice little title, right? 
I want to. I always thought fly fishing was very boring. I've never done it. No, actually, I did. I really was terrible at it, um, and I realized I should never do it again. But there are a lot of people out there that love fly fishing. Okay, maybe not the most popular podcast I can tell you, but it will be super popular with fly fishers. Do I talk about fly fishing? No. What I do is I'll take the the mechanic of fly fishing. I'll invite women from all walks of life. A transgender, a CEO, a mother and daughter, a Gen Zia, a widow, and I would I would go and record like their campfire stories of trying to come to unison as a fem, like a femme fatale generation, right, that lives in this world and, and use the mechanisms of fly fishing as metaphors or, or like I said mechanics to direct these conversations, right? And I don't know, I'll be like, Femme Fatale's on the fly. It could be like that, right? What you need to do is look at, let's say, concepts, big umbrella concepts, right? And break them down into really cool stories that you are interested in. Podcasting has to, has to one, satisfy you as the producer or creator first, right? That seems almost counterintuitive as a creative, like you've got to be someone that goes and, and creates something that's going to be popular for someone else. It doesn't work like that in podcasting. If you create it, they will come. And I know that comes from a movie with, is it Kevin Bacon? No, it's Kevin someone, right? Right, anyway, the point is feel the dreams. I've got a couple of, like let's say with gaming, I've got another one for gaming, like let's say partnering up with a local developer, like a development company, and following the stories of the developers, not the game itself, right? So while this is coming into fruition, what a great story to highlight that the heroes of these programmers and developers, to see the storyboarding, like the story development process, while their own stories develop as our heroes in like gameplay, right? I've got, for cosplay, I've always wanted to do this. I think it'd be great, like, like, like cosplayers that go out and go to orphanages around the country and go and create costumes and create little characters for little orphans and spend the days with them, you know? Uh, that's, it's this great kind of like taking it to hard stories that yes, you've got to play with people's emotions, but it'll be super great to hear. I've got kids, man, just like, like flying on high, sharing comic book experiences with these cosplayers that are proficient in pretending, just like a kid does, right? Um, board gaming. So how to develop a popular board game on a shoestring budget. That is a great podcast. Instead of having to spend a whole bunch of cash, oh, five minutes, right, I'm done, yeah. Okay, fan fiction. I've done this before, it's great, but it would be a great podcast. It's collaborative fan fiction. We did it with a couple of friends. It worked so well. Like we start somewhere with one person and their characters, they hand it over to another person. They develop the story further. They hand it over, almost like a blind, I don't know what the card games are, right? Collaborative fan fiction. Comics, how one comic changed my life. What a great podcast series. Simple, easy, but it's personal with the, like I said, intricacies of a comic book as well. Um, robotics. So how does how do robotics help with special aid development? And that is that is a nice educational angle as well. Um, uh, there's history, how uh, iconic comic book creators are helping you yourself make better life decisions every single day. That's what that's why we read comics, right? That's why we listen to their 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 propaganda. We love that. They've got better ideas than the rest of the world that that I say conventionally does the wrong things. And I've got a couple of minutes left. I just want to close off there. Hope you found some of this interesting. Um, I do want to say commit doing any committing to anything that's not going to monetize itself immediately. Whoa. Okay, switch them off already. Uh, we must play the award winning music, the Oscar winning music. Right. Um, it's something that people do not want to do. I understand that. A passion project has to be something you dedicate yourself today with, right? Stick to and then follow through on. Oh, okay. Exchange. Oh, thanks. Follow through on. I know you know that, but it is exhausting to hold on to an idea that doesn't come to fruition. Please don't go advertise that you're doing a podcast. Go do the pre-recordings, right? Go find out what the pre-production, the recon, um, and the post-production takes, the, the time that it takes. Editing, 
hashtag and creating like meta tag, like what the meta is in terms of like your SEO development, all those, all the admin stuff, how to actually edit in audio software, how to create banners, all that type of stuff, go through a process of, a, of one, just one whole episode and see how long that, how long it took you to do that, right? And then go and say, I want to do six episodes, do a series, don't commit to unlimited podcasting because that's when you dry out, that's when you fizzle out, and that's when you lose interest. Do a series that is about six to eight episodes and come back later, man. People will love you for it. Once everything is done, start releasing and marketing the product. Market the shizness out of it, right? Um, and really genuinely, be a great story, to be a great storyteller, just to have empathy, right? Put yourself in someone else's shoes to see what they actually are interested in, what they're going through, and obviously keep asking the question of why, why, and why, why. Be a little creepier, I can't, okay. All right, guys, I know they, uh, are there any questions, anything at all? Do I just do a virtual high five? Five virtual high five? Yes. <laughs> Thank you so much for, for just attending. Um, my name is Chris. Peace out. Happy podcasting. Cheers, guys.